All right, we are live. Hey guys, so we are here live today with Dalton Smith, who is the founder and owner of NPI Productions over in Cocoa Beach, Florida. You guys may already recognize his face from a lot of our slide tutorial videos and all the videos that we have on our website. And um, we're excited to see where he's come, where he started from, and where he is now. He turned his hobby of filmmaking and photography into now his business. So thank you for joining us today, Dalton. And No worries. I'm stoked. Yeah. So just start by telling us, I guess, you know, where you, how old you were when you first started videography and photography and, and how it expanded from there. Yeah, so it's funny because I've been with you guys now for like four <laughs> years at least. So you guys have seen like a huge like evolution just through that. But um, my name is Dalton Smith. I'm 26, about to turn 27. And we started making videos in like 2009 and 10. I picked up a camera when I was like 12 and had like the old school like tape camera, big ugly thing. And then when the GoPros came along, that's kind of like when – we started to really have fun with it, and uh, it's funny. The first like four years, we had no idea what we were doing. Um, we were having fun, we were learning, and we literally just kind of went with the flow. And so when you say we, who's we? Was it just you or your buddies or what? It started with friends. It's funny because everyone that works with me is still like my best friends. But um, there was just oh, there was always somebody. I was always connecting with somebody, and I've always had like kind of like a right hand man. Um, early on, uh, especially this kid named Tyler Rago, we literally built kind of like the foundation of MPI. We were, you know, getting barreled on, you know, huge foam boards while we were doing surf lessons and like jumping into pools and we would just put it on YouTube and it literally just kind of, we had no, like I said, we had no idea what we were doing. We were just, we were good at making videos and good at having fun and it just continued to lead us to more people. So, um, yeah, it's it's been it's been crazy because, like I said, the first five years was just kind of like, what's even happening? Is it, we're go, we don't even know where we're going, but we know we're like making improvements. And then I'd say like, or like 2014, like that was when like we really like shifted gears into a business, and it's just been growth ever since. What was your first paid video that you did? What was the first first company, and like what got you there? How did you get your first paid video? Um, it's cool because I tell people all the time, you know, especially when you're starting, you can't just like jump in, you know what I mean? Because nobody knows who you are. You got to kind of like find that medium between like doing stuff pro bono and trying to get paid. So basically, we did a video of this kid who's a skim mortar named Willie, and we made the super cool video. And then his sponsor saw it all the way in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and they they weren't gonna pay us, but they were gonna put us up and feed us and pay for us to get there to go film this uh, skim jam thing. So we went for like five days. We had like these ghetto, like homemade GoPro poles that were like 10 feet long. And it was just, it was amazing. We connected with a lot of people. And then ultimately one of the guys that worked for the company did write us a check for a little bit of money. So like, you know, we left there thinking it was just gonna pay for it. But that was the first time someone was like, hey, you know, here's some money to use your cameras to film something we do. So and at that time, did you already, um kind of make your business, did you already have NPI productions already, you know, as a legal business or were you, did you kind of just start doing these things on the side first? Yeah, we started doing them on the side first. Um, it's funny, NPI productions, like the name goes back to, you'd have to do the math. It was when I was 16 and it was on my birthday. So it was 11 years ago next month on my birthday, we came up with it. And basically my stepdad said NPI, he said, you said, uh, no pun intended. So we were like, what is that? And so people, nobody asks. Like sometimes people ask, but a lot of people don't ask. And then when they're like, really? That's what it means? I'm like, yeah, we were basically like hassling my stepdad. So <laughs> at the time, it was just a name. A lot of people knew about it, but it was just a name. So I think it was like maybe like 2014 or 15. The Skim Jam thing, um, it was for a company called, uh, crap, I can't even remember who it was now. Um, that was 2012. So, so that was the first job we did. In one of your first paid companies then too, because you were with 
Steve had signed an agreement with me before I was even on board. So, and I'm almost on like five years. So we must yep. get there. So Steve saw something in you. <laughs> no, it's funny. You guys were in the very beginning because what happened is I, I was stuck. I was so stuck. I didn't know what the heck to do. I needed to make money. I didn't know where to go. I was, I was doing kayak tours. I was doing surf lessons. And so I got on the internet and I made this massive list of just all these cool companies and I found slide hand boards. And what's funny is a guy named Willie Cole, who you guys have a ton of images of, he actually had one and I had seen you guys. And then I was like, okay, now I've got someone I can reference. So I hit up Steve, I told him about Willie. And like, that was like, you guys, you guys were like literally the very beginning when we were first kind of get off the ground. So it was cool. It worked out really good. Yeah, I know. It's amazing because I go back to your old videos and to where you are now. And it's like the growth and how far you've come is amazing. And it's just cool that you've stuck with it all this time. Um, but I know there are like highs and lows too. So what are, you know, starting up, how hard was it to start up? Like what's you know, the hurdles that you had to overcome. You know, I think we have a lot of people that are into videography, in phot photography, that like doing it as a hobby and want to do it as a business. So, you know, what do you have to do to overcome those hurdles to get there? Um, I tell people all the time, one of the most important things is consistency. Um, I feel like we've been good for a long time. But because we've been just beating this same message that we're not going anywhere for so many years, we literally kind of like dug out our own little rut. And it's almost like not even up for debate, if that makes sense. It's like we, we made a spot and buying new camera gear and, and learning new stuff is part of that, but it's consistency. So um, I tell people all the time as well that like I feel like a lot of people come out with a ton of steam. They have a great idea or a great talent or whatever. And then they like hit that like plateau. They don't know how to go from here to here. And it's funny because there's stages, you know what I mean? You've got to fit into bigger shoes at the right time. If you try to get too big too quick, it'll blow up in your face. But if you never grow, you'll get stuck. So literally as we speak, we're in the process of sizing up to a bigger shoe because things are growing and we're feeling growing pains right now. It's not that things are bad, but we're definitely like, wow, this is this is a lot and it's new. So we're having to kind of make some adjustments. I had to like, kind of like step back and like put my pride down for a second. Cause I want to have my hands on everything. Um, but it's, uh, I feel like it's just consistency and then overall just like being able to be flexible because things will change no matter what. Yeah. I think, yeah. What, what you said with consistent and not giving up because I think, it's you're always going to have those ups and downs and just keep charging through. Right. Yeah. I feel like a lot of brands and people that you want to like get connected with almost there's like a test period. You know what I mean? It's like getting to know someone. Like I feel like the first framework is just kind of like to try and see how serious you really are. You know what I mean? Um, if they said yes to everybody, then, you know, it wouldn't be as unique. So I feel like, you know, some of the people that work with us now that we used to think of working with, I feel like, you know, they knew who we were, but they wanted to just make sure we were ready. So who was your first big I mean, Ron Johns okay. for sure. Johns. Yeah. And it was early too. It was 2012. Um, but I didn't start working with them like quote unquote full time until 2014. So we sold them an image in my opinion, to this day, the best image we've ever done for like a billboard and almost two years went by. Um, I, I, the girl that was there left and then a new girl came on and then we started working with them again. So even that, you know what I mean? Like um, I wasn't discouraged. I was obviously like, oh, I wanted to do more, but by being patient and following up and, you know, now we've been working with them, same thing, like five years or more. So. Okay. Cool. And then who's the coolest i think i think I, did i see you with kelly slater on the, in the video or who yeah Corey's gonna kill me i need to put that video out i promise you you're that's what i needed that's the the motivation i needed to make this thing so long long story long story short basically Corey howell like my right hand man um pro surfer like uh fitness extraordinaire he has always spoken of working with kelly slater 
because Kelly is the king, not just of surfing, but of fitness and health. And he's just like, you know what? I need to see this guy. And I'm telling him, you know, so do I. <laughs> it's like, I need that conversation too. In, in November, um, Kelly came to town. He went to a local contest. Um, I briefly got to see him and talk to him. And then Corey later that night just so happened to come in while he was on the beach hanging out. They get to talk in, exchange phone numbers. And then two days later that Monday, it was the Monday after Black Friday, Kelly texts Corey and says, come over. I want you to work on my foot. Um, so, yeah, we. No, wait, what does that mean? Work on my foot. What well, his, he had an, he had a, he had uh, Kelly had an injury on his foot. Okay. And um, Corey has some, um, I guess, newer ways to approach injuries like that. Whoa. And he caught Kelly's attention and he wanted to try. So Corey's like, you're going with me. And I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm going with you or, or none of us are going. So we go to his house and um, it was uh, it was really cool. He's just chilling. He's just chilling. He's just it's everything you'd expect, but he's just a normal guy. We walk in, he's got an ACE hardware bag, and he's changing his light bulbs and just hanging out in the house. And uh, it was really cool. We were there for about three hours. We talked about food, surfing, life, business. And I tell people all the time, I feel like I got like five years of like knowledge in like three hours. Okay. So, so how much of that did you get on video? A lot of it. We got a lot. Um, it was funny. We walked up. And he was like, what's with the camera? And, like, and he looked, I was like, ask Corey. Like, ask Corey, I'm just, I'm just here to help. And he was like, yeah, you know, he's like, I, I'd love to use this for my business. He's like, okay, cool. You know, just, nice. he doesn't want us blowing up his personal life. So it was cool because right before we left, he starts making us like his secret little juice recipe. So him and Corey are like geeking out over like ginger and all this different stuff. So it was cool. We didn't just work on him. We got to kind of like look into his life a little bit. So. That was awesome. Cool. Um, so let's get back to um, kind of what what's your favorite equipment? What do you use now when you're when you're I guess filming first, and then um, also photography. As well. Yeah. So I shoot almost all video, um, mostly just because we do so much of it. It's hard for me to go back and forth. But uh, for years we used a Nikon D750. And we still do use that. It just depends on the setting. Um, and then we have a Sony FS700, which anything that you see that's like super slow motion, especially in the water, that was filmed with that. And then recently, good job, bro. I was about to ask you this. Recently, we just bought this. This is the brand new Panasonic GH5S. I think it came out like a month ago. And um, I've been joking around. Our poor Nikons are getting like cold and dusty sitting inside the case because we use this all the time. Um, but it's funny because a lot of people are like, wow, you use that many different cameras? And we use a lot. We use the Nikon. We use the Sony FS700. We use the Panasonic. We have two drones. We have GoPros. We have a little bit of everything. So if I were to suggest one camera, it would be this one. This one is amazing. This is the, this is the money maker. And what do you prefer, filming on land or in the water? Um... So for like shore break, I love filming in the water because it's right close to the beach. You can stand like there's a, a consistent wave coming in. But I kind of hate when I get way outside and it's hard to get in position. It's frustrating. You know what I mean? Like when you're watching clips happen and you can't get it, um, which is kind of like why I like I like appreciate good water stuff so much. Because if I see it, I'm like, wow, that guy you know went through a lot to get that. So I enjoy filming on the beach because it gives me more options. But when you nail a shot in the water, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's, you're, you're like more engaged and involved because you're like, you're like swimming and trying to link up. You're not trying to get run over, but you want to get real close. So it's kind of fun getting in the water. Um, but I'd say, uh, if it's shore break, stick me in the water. But if it's really big, just keep me on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then what is your favorite video that you've made so far in your entire career? Oh my goodness. That is a hard question. Favorite video. After this is over. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, we uh, we did a couple Stoke episodes, which was like our little mini series, yeah, I and I got to like tell stories in that because like I like to I like to do film, but I like to talk a lot too. Um, <laughs> so there was one in particular that we did on the Space Coast, which is where I was born and raised, 
and I got to incorporate so much footage. You guys were in there. I got to talk about rocket launches. And I jumped out of the helicopter. So I don't know. I feel like that kind of like engulfed like my love for storytelling and for adventure and everything else. So is that kind of where you want to go with NPIs? Do I mean doing more storytelling? Like what's next for NPI? Any like what's more surf, more adventure, more documentary style. What do you see? I see definitely a lot more adventure stuff. Um, we're so busy on like a commercial level as far as just having a lot of work, which I love. But like I got to the point where I was like, I can't do it anymore. So now I've got all these people helping me and it's helping to where I can start working on those personal projects that I really enjoy. Um, one of which is the Stoke series. And one of which is this new series called Vacations, where we just go somewhere for a day. And we did like Las Vegas, Savannah. Like people are like, wait, you went from Florida to Las Vegas and back in a day. And so I like to entertain. So I foresee my business growing exponentially and me kind of overseeing a lot and then being able to really kind of like adventure and storytell and have fun with all my personal stuff. So how do you handle all that growth and like, and like you have lots more people working with you now how do you handle your life and balancing everything and, and growing? it is not easy at all it's so hard and i'm a young guy too so it's just like almost overwhelming sometimes but i am super blessed to have like the best possible team i can imagine and it's very hard for me to find someone that fits the like the perfect guy because like they've got to not be able to shoot they got to be able to just deal with the madness and the craziness and you know it, it's fun but it's so gnarly sometimes like I try to tell people like it looks glamorous on Facebook but oh my goodness if people knew the hours so having those people with me helps tremendously and then honestly my family um, my mom helps me out a lot and so uh, the, the hardest thing for me was the most important thing is I had to step back I had to step back and start delegating and overseeing and that's something that i kid you not we just have kind of figured out in the last like four or five months so um so what how did you know that you wanted to hire more people instead of just kind of staying where you were and doing everything yourself and maybe just a couple other people how did you know you wanted to expand and and make that decision because you could have just you know had it been just you and a couple of friends and and that's it and made a good business how did you know you wanted to expand and go further um i feel like i'm like addicted to like <laughs> to positive stuff i don't know i like i just i like the vibe like when we're doing a lot and like people are like man you know you guys are killing it it just like i don't know i i just love it so and i enjoy what i do obviously so um I wasn't really, I thought about it all the time. I was like, do I want to go this route or do I want to go this route? And I didn't know. And then like my whole life, like sh got flipped upside down in November and I had to make some seriously important decisions. And I kind of had to like step away for a little bit and just kind of like recenter my life. And so I had no choice, but to give my guys some work and they not only did an amazing job, they did better than I expected in some cases, and then the work just started coming in. So I was like, almost like it, it was just steering me in that direction. So from then, November, December, January, February, and March, we have just not sat still. And um, amazingly, I'm don't get me wrong, I'm still working my butt off, but I'm actually able to kind of, you know, relax a little, oversee things, and we've added two new people. So um, it didn't happen overnight, and it wasn't some like big uh, thing. It was kind of like growing pains, like I said, and uh, basically, eventually, we were just like, okay, this is too much. Let's regroup, and we're going to do this differently. So if you could give someone who wants to get into it any advice, you know, who's thinking about starting their own video company and uh, wanting to, you know, love surf and the adventure side, what would you give them for advice on how to start and, and go for it? Um, first I would say get a good job doing something else first so that way you can fund what you want to do because out of all the careers to just jump into, uh, there's a lot of need for it right now, but there's also a lot of us. So in order to make enough to survive, it is hard. So I would say have a good job 
and then lean into it, you know, see how it goes. And then I tell people to look at it like this. Here's your main job. Here's what you want to do. And you just kind of take it off and switch over. Um, I know a lot of people are like, yeah, you know, I quit my job. I'm going to, I'm going to be this. And then, you know, they run out of money and it doesn't work. Um, and then I would say, ask yourself if you really want it. And I did a, I do Facebook live tip tips of the day a lot. And the other day I talked about sacrifices and I don't think people understand that you have to sacrifice a lot to run a business. You have to sacrifice personal time for yourself, with your spouse, your family, with your friends, your sleep. Um, so, and then, you know, I, I feel like some people, if they actually understood that, they might go the route of, well, I want to film or do photos, but I'd rather do it for a company. I'd rather, you know, be on someone's team, which isn't a bad thing. It's honestly like all the same bells and whistles, except for you don't have to stress. And so it really depends on who you are and what you want. Some people want the world and they want to have their name in lights. And some people want to just do what they love and make enough to get by. So um, I would say to have a good job, look into it and make some money and see how hard or easy it is for you to make that money. And then um, honestly, a lot of people that I know have decided to go another route and have a job that they like that pays the bills. And then they spend either less hours working that other job or they just spend their free time on the weekends. They go out. I know guys that work at NASA that go out and shoot surf on the weekends. Yeah. You know, um, that or they just do it as a hobby. They do both, but they do paid gigs. That's the that's the cool thing. You know, they've decided that you know I, I need to make my money here. I can make extra money. You know, they pay for a vacation a year on their their little you know side shoots, and then they get to do what they love. And ultimately, it pays for their gear, so it kind of like supports their habit just shooting it. So. How much does it cost to really get into having a good good setup? Like if I wanted to be a videographer tomorrow, how much would I need? How much money would I need to be in gear? Well, what's funny is cameras keep getting better and cheaper for the most part. So it's getting easier. Um, we have this camera with a kit lens. And I think this setup is like, $3,300, $3,400 with the lens. And then we have a crane, which is like a steady gimbal, and it's like $800. So basically, that get up, it's not everything, but you could go shoot a video to, tomorrow for a little over four grand. Um, and there's other options, but people ask us all the time, you know, between like all the gear, I mean, we have tens of thousands of dollars in equipment. Um, and so, and it didn't happen. I remember 2012. I had this crappy tripod and I had to have a, a pair of pliers to open it because <laughs> it was rusted shut and the legs were broken and I'm there with Nate Adams, who's the ESM main photographer. This guy's got cover shots. And I'm like, Hey bro, how much was that tripod? I'm thinking, I think I'm going to upgrade mine. He's like, yeah, I think it was like eight or 900. And I'm just like, I'm never going to make it. I told myself that on the beach. And I was, I was like, I was like, I'm never going to make it. And it's just slow growth. You buy a little bit. Up when you first started or like when you were just doing it back in 2010 2011 I mean when we hired you like how did you pay for your equipment because you weren't making much money <laughs> um I had to not buy anything for myself and I, I I had like a couple really good ideas one of which that you guys were involved with where I said well I'm young I have long hair. I have no experience for the most part. I don't have like a $20,000 camera. What am I going to do? So instead of saying, hey, give me a bunch of money, I went to a bunch of people and said, hey, let's do like a group project where like everybody throws in a little money. We all kind of, you know, cross promote and then it's not too expensive for any one brand. We get paid and then everyone cross promotes and that got us by for like years, like years. Eventually, there was too many people and not enough work, um, but ultimately, we were flexible. And that's one of the hardest things about building a business is like that transition phase where you have to kind of – you kind of got to just go shoot. Like I kid you not, the, if you want to build a business with content, go shoot at your local skate park, at your local beach, at your local event. Put it on Instagram. Put it on Facebook and just keep, keep doing that. Um, I think three of the guys that work for me, I found them through social media. And I knew who they were for about like a year before I ever hired them. And eventually I was like, you know what? This dude's good and he's good all the time. I'm going to call him. And so 
like I said, that consistency really stands out. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so is there anything else you want to give for advice or feedback for anyone wanting to get in to have fun with it? I feel like, you know, I, like I said, like a whole lot of stuff changed in my life last year. And I basically came to the realization that I was going way too hard. <laughs> I was just, I, it was overly consuming and I was almost not having fun at times. And so at that moment, I realized that in order to grow as a business, I needed to start de you know, delegating. And in order for me to enjoy it again, I need to start delegating because, you know, there's only 24 hours in a day. So that's the most important thing. If you picked it up because you love it, which is why most people do, you can't lose that. It's the same idea as like becoming a professional athlete. You still got to remember those days that you went and surfed by yourself just because, you know. Um, so that's the most important thing is realizing why you're doing it and doing it for the right reasons. You know, not everybody has to have a red to make epic videos. To answer your question, I had a GoPro one and a, a kit Nikon D5100 with a kit lens for years. I mean, in 2011, I got to go out to the Air Force Base and ride in a Black Hawk helicopter and I'm duct taping GoPros to the heads of these guys. And so um, I would say just have fun with it and uh, don't rush it. Consistency is key. And before we go, let's just talk a little bit about handboarding. What's your favorite handboard of choice? I've gone back and forth so many times. Um, I'd say probably the Bula. I love the Bula. It's just so small and it's just such a little nugget. And I love being able to paddle with both hands. Like when it's really big, that's my favorite board. But then you guys sent me a fish and I was like really stoked with the fish. I was making more barrels like out of the barrels on the fish than any other board. And it was because it had so much float. Um, and then the next thing you know, I like took the, the Grom out and I was like, ah, oh, you know, I was like, I wonder, I wonder how I'm going to feel about it. And it was really fun. So, but I'm going to stick with my choice. I would say if I had to pick one, the Bula just suits me. So. Yeah. Cool. And then where do you see handboarding and the sport of body surfing going in the next 2018 and beyond? Cause you've kind of been watching the sport growing since, well, at least since slides been around. So where do you yeah. see it going? It's just going to continue to grow. And I think it's cool because for a lot of reasons, not everybody can go surf, surf, whether that's waves or where they live or their condition, whatever. But having something that can fit into a backpack that some kid in New York City can jump on a subway and go out to Long Island, you know what I mean? Like something that's actually possible like that. It just opens doors for people. And I think if you look around and you see how many new companies are trying to do boards, it just speaks for itself. Like the, there's people out there that are getting interested in it. And it's cool because I don't know, I feel like it's overdue. Handboarding has been around forever and yeah. people have been using people like Steve have been using flip flops and food trays and stuff, you know, forever. So um, I would say you guys were like the pioneers of like, like the, the new age, like body surfing movement. So, yeah, I hope it's just the beginning and we'll have much more to come. But thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us and giving advice yeah. for aspiring videographers. And um, if you guys want to go check on our website and all our how-tos, you'll see Dalton's face from all the beginning videos he did for us back in, like, I don't know, 2012, Yeah, it was 2012. Um, yeah, we still use them. There's, we still have them up. And then um, up until just last year, some other um, awesome videos that, that you did for us. And um, there'll be more to come. So we're excited to keep working with Dalton and to keep seeing uh, your company grow. And we want to stay with you for the lifetime. So thanks, Dalton. For sure. No, I'm stoked. It's been cool. It's been like you said, we've been both growing together. And I think that's kind of like an important thing. Teamwork makes a dream work. Yep, you got it. All right, have so, a great day, and thanks, guys. Awesome. Bye. See you guys later.